the FBI is calling China the greatest threat to America. And the U.S. is considering banning TikTok. That and more on this week's China News Headline. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. Well, it's Christmas in July, and this month, Santa came in the form of FBI Director Christopher Wray. And the gifts? Some serious truth bombs about China. In a speech at the Hudson Institute on July 7th, Director Wray called China the greatest threat to America. The greatest long-term threat to our nation's information and intellectual property and to our economic vitality is the counterintelligence and economic espionage threat from China. It's a threat to our economic security and by extension to our national security. And get this. We've now reached the point where the FBI is opening a new China-related counterintelligence case about every 10 hours. Every 10 hours? I guess that's why coffee sales are way up over at the FBI. But Ray offered his own caffeine-free wake-up call to the American people. But if you think these issues are just an intelligence issue, or a government problem, or a nuisance largely just for big corporations who can largely take care of themselves, you could not be more wrong. It's the people of the United States who are the victims of what amounts to Chinese theft on a scale so massive that it represents one of the largest transfers of wealth in human history. If you're an American adult, it is more likely than not that China has stolen your personal data. That's why I recommend creating so much personal data, they can't tell which one is real. Of course, the Chinese Communist Party was shocked by Director Ray's outlandish accusations. Ray's remarks ignored basic facts and were full of political lies which fully exposed his deep-rooted Cold War mentality and ideological prejudice. China is firmly opposed to this. But there was another sore point for my pal Zhao Lijian here. Ray also called out China's Operation Fox Hunt, which, while it sounds like a plot point in the Metal Gear franchise, is actually quite different. Here's how Zhao describes it. China's launch of its overseas Operation Fox Hunt and the recapture of suspects who fled abroad is safeguarding the dignity of the law and social justice. But who are these suspects who fled abroad? We're talking about political rivals, dissidents, and critics seeking to expose China's extensive human rights violations. Hundreds of these fox hunt victims that they target live right here in the United States, and many are American citizens or green card holders. The Chinese government wants to force them to return to China, and China's tactics to accomplish that are shocking. So they're not just setting out a trap of milk and cookies? In the past, their family members, both here in the United States and in China, have been threatened and coerced, and those back in China have even been arrested for leverage. I will take this opportunity to note that if you believe the Chinese government is targeting you, that you're a potential fox hunt victim, please reach out to your local FBI field office. Wait, the FBI wants to help these anti-China criminals? Do U.S. officials make such a statement in hopes that the United States will become a haven for fleeing criminals? Well, if they're fleeing the CCP, like the Hong Kong protesters, I have a feeling that America would happily become a haven for those criminals. But it wasn't just Christopher Wray speaking out about China. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo was back at it too. He called out the Chinese Communist Party for banning foreigners from traveling to Tibet. Hmm, I wonder why the party doesn't let outsiders into Tibet. I mean, Lhasa, the capital of Tibet, has repeatedly been ranked the happiest city in China, according to a poll conducted by Chinese state-run media. And would they lie? So obviously, the Communist Party doesn't want foreigners in Tibet because they don't want them to see how happy Tibetans are. They might get jealous. Oh, and also, they don't want foreigners to get altitude sickness. See, they just want what's best for foreigners. Which is why it's so insulting that the U.S. is putting a travel ban on Chinese officials 
who put a travel ban on Tibet. So, in response to that, the Chinese Communist Party announced that it will put a travel ban on U.S. officials who put a travel ban on Chinese officials who put a travel ban on Tibet. The world is run by five-year-olds. Hey, I know how to solve U.S.-China tensions. I'll just let Xi Jinping play with my toys. Wait, no. Then I'll just say my toys have been part of his territory since ancient times. For the first time ever, the U.S. government is sanctioning Chinese officials under the Global Magnitsky Act. This is huge. Yes, the Treasury Department is sanctioning four current and former Communist Party officials in Xinjiang, as well as the Xinjiang Public Security Bureau. That's for their human rights abuses against the Uyghurs and other Muslim ethnic minorities in Xinjiang. And these sanctions mean that any property or money that these officials have in the U.S. is blocked, and no U.S. citizens or companies can do business with them. Corrupt Chinese Communist Party officials have spent years squirreling away money overseas. So now that the U.S. government is directly going after their money, that's a big deal. Secretary of State Pompeo is also blocking these officials from being able to travel to the U.S. Tick tock, tick tock, the clock is running out on the Chinese Communist Party because Pompeo is also talking about banning tick tock. See what I did there? The U.S. government is looking into allegations TikTok violated children's privacy. On Monday, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the United States was certainly looking at banning the app. He suggested it shared information with the Chinese government. TikTok denied the accusation. Any potential ban would be a heavy blow for TikTok. It said last year that 60% of its 26 million monthly active users in the U.S. are aged 16 to 24. U.S. lawmakers have also raised national security concerns over TikTok's handling of user data. Pompeo also suggested there might be other Chinese apps that need to be looked at, but he didn't give more details. I'm going to go with WeChat. You know, the app that tracks your conversations, your location, and everything you buy? Possibly that's also a concern. One of the tactics the Communist Party has been using to undermine the U.S. and other democratic countries is the Confucius Institute. Basically, the Chinese government sets up language and culture programs in Western schools and universities. And those classes teach the next generation of Americans Chinese language and culture and, incidentally, how great the Chinese Communist Party is. But now, the U.S. Senate has unanimously passed the Confucius Act. Among other things, this bill would grant full managerial authority of each Confucius Institute to the school or university, including full control over what is being taught. Which is to say, yes, up until now, the Chinese Communist Party is actually in control of what gets taught at American schools, at least inside the Confucius Institutes. But over the last few years, more and more schools in the West have been expressing concern about this. A bunch of schools have even gotten rid of their Confucius Institutes. In response, the Chinese Communist Party has taken a step back to reflect on its mistakes and... <laughs> just kidding. They're just going to change the name. The Ministry of Education said the Confucius Institute headquarters, or Hanban, had changed its name to the Ministry of Education Center for Language Education and Cooperation. Yes, I'm sure that will fool the senators who wrote that pesky Confucius Act. Hey, it didn't say anything about Centers for Language Exchange and Cooperation. Good news for Peter Humphrey. Humphrey is a British citizen who was imprisoned in China, put in a steel cage, drugged, and forced to make a confession on Chinese state-run media, and then Chinese state-run CCTV broadcast his televised confession in the UK in 2013 and 2014. Okay, none of that is good news. The good news is, after a long campaign by Humphrey, the British media regulator Ofcom has finally declared that broadcasting his forced confession in the UK was officially not cool. Ofcom said the interviews with Mr. Humphrey fell short of the regulator's requirements on consent, privacy, and factual reporting. What? Chinese state-run media fell short on factual reporting? 
And now, Ofcom said it has put CCTV on notice that it intends to consider statutory sanction, which could include fines or loss of the broadcast license. But that would be so unfair to block a foreign country's state-run media. For more on what happened to Peter Humphrey in China and his legal battle in the UK, listen to our interview with him on our podcast, China Unscripted. Yes, we also do a podcast every week on another YouTube channel. Now, if Australians in China aren't careful, they too could soon be appearing in their own forced televised confessions. The Australian government is warning their citizens that they could face arbitrary arrest in China. I mean, technically, there was already a warning in place not to travel anywhere because of the coronavirus. But you know, based on Peter Humphrey's experience, getting arbitrarily arrested in China is also a reason not to travel to China. The warning comes as the Australian government gets more and more vocal about all the terrible things the Chinese Communist Party is doing. And as the Communist Party had arbitrarily detained two Canadians for political reasons. So what was China's response to Australia warning its citizens not to travel to China? To warn Chinese citizens not to travel to Australia because of racism. Look, Xi, you're a big boy now. You can't keep acting like that. Why can't you act more like Donnie? So in addition to the coronavirus and that new swine flu with pandemic potential, China has a little bit of a bubonic plague on its hands right now. Don't worry. The World Health Organization says it's not high risk. Now it's not incredibly unusual for China to have the bubonic plague. There was an outbreak last November as well. But Considering how accurate the WHO's advice was on the coronavirus, I'd say, run, run, we are all doomed. And speaking of impending doom, thousands in Southwest China have flocked to the mountains because the mountains are making a weird sound. Oh. Well, that's obviously the smoke monster from Lost. So I'm sure it's just all a dream. Or purgatory. What was that show about? No. Oh, well. Or maybe it's just a guerrilla marketing campaign for cough drops. Ricola. And now it's a time when I answer questions from you, my loyal 50 cent army. Fans of the show who support what we do through the crowdfunding website, Patreon. Louisa asks, I would like to use a VPN now. How can I get discount from Surfshark? You know, Louisa, I'm guessing you might be from Hong Kong. Surfshark is a great VPN. In fact, they're one of the few companies with the courage to sponsor China Uncensored. Usually, when a YouTube channel has over a million subscribers, advertisers would be beating down our door. But not when we criticize the Chinese Communist Party. How about that? But Surfshark works with us to give China Uncensored fans a great discount. In fact, they're sponsoring tomorrow's episode about the insane new powers of the Hong Kong police. So check out that episode, which will have the promo code and link you'll need to get set up with Surfshark. Thanks for your question, Louisa. And if you are in Hong Kong, please take care. And for all of you watching, consider joining the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army on Patreon. You'll have a chance to ask me questions on the show, and there are some other cool perks as well. Check out patreon.com slash China Uncensored to learn more. We also have another show called America Uncovered. It's just like China Uncensored, only about America. Be sure to subscribe to that as well. We also do a weekly podcast called China Unscripted. It's available with video on YouTube, as well as your favorite podcast platform of choice. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.